feel like Gordon Bombay would have taken his career to even further height. Everything's flashy, everything's cocaine, everything's fun. Open wide for some soccer! I don't care what you think about, what your personal thoughts are at home. I care that you hate the Cowboys. Call this college rule! Welcome back, everybody, to the Sports Experience Podcast. Dom and Chris here. Before we begin, as always, check out our social medias down below, as well as the Sports Experience Podcast on Instagram, YouTube, and Spotify. Go like and subscribe to our stuff. It's quality. It's fantastic. And Chris, we're in the middle. Actually, not the middle. Series. No, we're at the end now. We're at the we're end. We're at the end. That's right. We got Stone Dom on our hands. Yep, we're at bet. the <laughs> We're at the end of our series of real wrestling. Real wrestling. Real athletes that uh, decided to go into the world wrestling entertainment industry. And today we, we have, without a doubt, the most famous. We're talking about who we got. We got Dwayne The Rock Johnson. That's right. He's got a lot of other different names, but... Dwayne the Rock Johnson and a, a fun path. He has like a fun little football path where, where we, if we go into it, if he maybe played for somebody else, maybe gets a different, you know, like he goes somewhere else. Maybe we find him in the NFL. That's the what 90s, I mean. We like don't know. That. Playing don't for know. the horrible Patriots in that era. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Wearing those uh, Pat Patriot helmets, the white ones. Those are the best. Oh, yeah. All right. So Dwayne The Rock Johnson, born May 2nd, 1972, in Hayward, California. His dad, Rocky, much like our Macho Man Randy Savage episode, was a professional wrestler mm -hmm. and a very good professional wrestler and uh, broke a lot of boundaries. He was like world first uh, black world champion in, in all of these little tiny scenes. And then he's, he was talking about how he kind of became famous when him and uh, Tony Atlas became the first black uh, tag team. Yep world champions mm -hmm. so uh yeah his dad was like kind of a famous wrestler but uh as we see through his childhood was constantly broke so yeah uh his mom uh also part of a wrestling family oh i that something i didn't know so that yep adopted daughter of peter Maiva, a former wrestler and uh she was a wrestling promoter as well for polynesian pacific pro wrestling so he's got wrestling on both sides of his family. One of the first uh, female promoters. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I thought it was interesting because later on, too, we see almost his whole family is in, in this wrestling business. So. It's been very good to them, Chris. Yes. Real wrestling. Real wrestling. <laughs> so he moves around a lot. You know what I mean? He, I saw he lived in uh, New Zealand with his mom's family for a bit. Yep. Uh, basically like Macho Man with his dad and his profession. Just it, going everywhere. You're so right with the Macho Man. I was thinking about that, too, with this. I was just like, these wrestling kids really yeah. had the same life. It's not, <laughs> it's not anything crazy, especially what he said, too, like with his dad being in it. He, like, said he saw, like, the back... He saw it as characters. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like they, he got the fact that it was like they were playing into it, and like the the key wasn't like the big thing wasn't winning; it was getting the crowd over. Yeah, and it's like he saw it as oh, this is a job. Yes, like not, oh, not that it can't be fun, but like this is like a job. This is how people earn money. So like either you're either going to enjoy it or you're probably not going to like it mm -hmm. at all. So he definitely got into it as moving around as a kid. He also played rugby in addition to another sport, which we'll talk about later, and uh, went to high school in three different states Well, because he moved around so much. I was going to say, because his parents end up divorcing, I think, when he is like 14, 15, yeah. um, and he says that his his mom got evicted in a house in or an apartment in Honolulu. So like his he had a really rough childhood. He was like stealing a bunch. He was fighting a bunch, which kind of makes sense because he was huge. Yeah, you don't want to mess with him, but like at all. And I think he was saying he was just like I was fighting like older like men because he was <laughs> like he was like sixteen. He was like six four. So it was just like oh yeah yeah I was fighting like men and you're just like oh they I guess yeah geez. they did that back in the nineties, Chris. You just found other men and fought them. That's true. <laughs> And that's the way, that's when life was better. It was a simpler time. Simpler time. You we all drank Folgers. Go to a 7 Eleven parking lot and say, You're a man. You're Let's a man. fight. And then they would, you know, buy a pack of Lucky Strikes, no filters. No filters, and just smoke them and then cross swords later in the restroom. Stuff just wasn't gay like it is now. No, it wasn't. It just wasn't. And then they kiss a little. <laughs> you guys, we're talking wrestling here. We're not. 
<laughs> well, uh, come anyway. on, boys. So, he, so, but go ahead. I was just gonna say, just like Mach, rough childhood, constantly moving around, and it is this like until he finds sports, he is very like looking for something, and 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 just like a, a lost kind of kid. But then he finds football being huge. This is what I always see is like the coach like sees them in the hallway or whatever, and they're like. Yeah. Why aren't you on my team? You. No, the kid that's towering over <laughs> everybody else. There's really two kinds of ways the coaches and teachers do that. Who they want on the football field or who goes on the back of the van. That's <laughs> You. You. I mean you. No, not on the foot. No. No. Let's go. So he had, like you had said, arrested for fighting theft. Check fraud. That's the one that I couldn't believe. Yep. He's, he's writing bad checks. It's like, uh, what's the movie? Uh, Catch Me If You Can. Well, he was, in, I was going to say, he was in a, he, he said he was kind of in like a Polynesian gang at yeah. that time. So like they were just doing all kinds of dirt, essentially. Um, to, it's weird to think like the most popular movie star in the world could have been in jail. Yeah. You know. There would have been a dateline. They wouldn't have called him The Rock. No. Dwayne the Slasher Jensen. Oh my God, Dwayne the Slasher. He was brutal. You guys didn't see. He actually did this weird kind of wrestling move. We never saw it before. He did this weird wrestling move where he took the dough and he rolled it into a little ball. And she, with the dough, with the dough. So anyway, he he goes to uh, Freedom High School. Oh yes. Was there was there fight song Rock Flag and Eagle from it be- Sunny? It better have been like because it, did, it was Rock Freedom. Flag and Eagle. They were freedom. <laughs> freedom. I even wrote fight song Rock Flag and Eagle. Well, because it's true. That's I mean, you know. It has to be. Um, <laughs> the guy pulls out a cigarette. Whoa, excuse me. What are you doing, sir? What am I... God. You, on the football field, you see that? You get fork stabbed. You get fork stabbed. Calm down, Charlie. <laughs> so anyway, he's excelling at defensive tackle. And yes. he's, he's in track and field. I'm assuming he's throwing things for track and field. But he's wrestling, real wrestling mm-hmm. also at this time. Um, but it's obvious that football is his... Um, He's 6'5", 260 as a senior in high school. Yes. That's, so You should be fighting men in random parking lots. And what he said was, at this point, it was like he was kind of changing his life. Like, he wasn't getting into so much dirt. He found football, and in his senior year, he said every single college was coming through to recruit him. Mm-hmm. But the one that he wanted... No, yeah. wasn't coming through so he literally contacted the university of miami and said why aren't you rec- recruiting me That's so and great. they sent somebody to be like all right yeah well we'll watch you <laughs> and then he proceeds to go to the university of miami and during the glory years of miami which this is like another oh, the an- fun years another spider web that you think of like what would happen so like Let's get into it. Nin- I mean, he goes 1990? He, he could, yeah, he goes in 1990. He could have gone to Penn State at this time and been privy to some really awful shit. Well, but we won't talk about that. We'll talk about the U. Red shirts his <laughs> freshman year. Then it is a backup in 91. Where they, win, they win, the, win the national championship. Yep. When they win the national championship. Um, he actually gets injured. Yep. Um, he like uh, I forget exactly what it was, but he said it was the... Um, it was the last practice on doubles or two a days, and mm-hmm. he said he. I think he got drove into the ground and dislocated his shoulder or some shit. So like he he was going through these injuries where he kind of like wasn't starting and was coming off the bench and shit like that. And then we run well, into going into it going into his redshirt sophomore year. You're thinking he's going to be the next and the dominant defensive tackles because they'd been sending to this point dudes the NFL like Jerome Brown, Russell Maryland was the number one overall pick, Cortez Kennedy, but. They move a guy over from offense this to is the, the defensive tackle. And position. it is a classic story. It's great. Let's let's get into it, Chris. So he walks in because obviously uh offense and defense kind of like sit separately. Yeah. Um and he said he walked in and Warren Sapp is sitting with the defensive players. Yep. And he goes, What are you doing over here? And he goes, I'm here to take your job. <laughs> the rock goes, The fuck you are. <laughs> and then he took my job. And then he just took it. I mean, he took his jam. Well, he even said before that because he was such a force, like Warren Sapp was such a force on the team. He was just like, oh, yeah, he used to, like, bully me even before he came over. And, like, 
before he took my job, it was like still like kind of like he was like this dominant force. And yeah. So when they moved him to defense, it was almost like, ah, shit. There's so, no shame in losing your job to an NFL Hall of Famer. And I mean, like, this is what we were saying. Like maybe if he hadn't gone to Miami, he might have been a, he might have had a different path. So yeah. So basically, ninety two, ninety three, ninety four are just all spent in backup yeah. roles and on the bench. He did sack Charlie Ward. I saw a highlight of that. One That's of the, nice. Uh, yep. That's nice. I like that a lot. Um, um, but no, his college football career. Doesn't feature a lot of playing college football. Exactly. Not that he's not on the team. It's exactly. Just, yeah. Uh, so he ends up getting. Um, does he go straight to Canada? Yeah, go straight to Canada. Go straight to the Calgary Stampeders, um, and he said. So I saw an interview with him where he was talking about like looking back on his life, and he was just like, "This era of football, even though he was having fun, was like one of the worst times because yeah. Miami. He thought he was going to be this star. He ends up just being the backup for like three years. He goes to Canada, and he said I, he was like, I was making two hundred to two hundred and fifty dollars a week, and I was just sending it home to my wife. Oh God! And he was like, dude, I, they were like living off of." cup of ramen you know what i mean so like they were living off of like ramen and be, trying to be professional football oh, players and he, he was talking about it. he was just like so we were just essentially starving you know what yeah. i mean even though they're not eating, how you build football teams canada no 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 so, like you're doing the opposite of what you need these men should be fed so he gets cut from the calgary team and he said he was kind of at this point where he had no idea what he was going to do and the only thing left was Real wrestling. The family business. Yeah. So, and that's what I kind of find interesting is like, you kind of see this with Mach, the fucking, the king, Macho Man. Macho Man. Um, you see this kind of path of being like, well, I know I can do this wrestling. I grew up with it. Yeah. So it's like, let's go. And what, same thing was... Uh, he's, the, he's a natural for it. Like, you know, you spend his, all your time... It's not like Kurt Angle where it's like, oh, no, 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 you can do everything. Or yep. Brock Lesnar, just like, give us some pizzazz. Well, his dad immediately was just like, no, no, we don't want that. And <laughs> what he said, too, he was just like, well, my dad and all my uncles, if you ever seen the movie The Wrestler, that was them. Exactly, like, that yeah. was all of them. <laughs> that, that's not like an isolated story. That was their lives, if you've ever seen The Wrestler. So that's why when he said he wanted to get into it, they were all just like, no, no. <laughs> but his dad ends up training him, and he said he's, he was just like, he trained me so much harder than anybody else probably that, wanted him to quit yeah Just like I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, if he emerges out of this he could do whatever the fuck he wants but like, then he gets a, a tryout through this normal wwe path that we see yeah with like jim ross vince mcmahon and like these underground little like training centers yeah mm -hmm. um so he goes through that um and they say he he was like Almost like immediately took to it. Like they, they could see because obviously he's completely athletic. Yeah. Um, but they were the, and this is what they always say. They were just like, he could cut a promo like almost right away. And he's good looking. Yep. And also he has a origin story with built in. Uh, yes. Like that's exactly like you don't have to put in any effort. Yes. Because they, when they introduce him, they introduce him as like this third generation wrestler. Yeah. Because it was like his grandfather was a wrestler through his mom's side. His dad was a wrestler. And then so they, they bring him out as Rocky Mayavia, which was both their names combined. Mm -hmm. And then he makes his debut in the WWE. And at first, he's definitely one of the good guys. I thought this was interesting at how many times it went. Because obviously, I don't remember this. I only remember him as like... Yeah, the dude. But it, it, there were so many times of him being the good guy, then the bad guy, then the good guy, then the bad guy, then the good. And you're just like, oh yeah, that. It's called acting. Chris. That it's was called quite yes the ending. flip flop that they were going through every other week. One week you'd be like, dude, I want Stone Cold to beat the shit out of him, and then you know what? The next week you're like, you know what? I'll I'll take the Rock this week. I'll take the Rock this week. Exactly. Um, I thought it was interesting. His first huge match was against uh, Triple H mm -hmm. for the Intercontinental title. He ended up winning that. Um, another interesting little tidbit was that he said that Bret Hart took him under his belt. Yeah. 
which um, is a good person to have as you're coming up through real wrestling in the 90s. Well, and he said he was just like, well, it was kind of like that. My family's in wrestling, your family's in wrestling. And um, a, a, a later story, which I, I'm just going to say because I don't really want to forget it, was the night that Owen Hart died. Oh, yeah. Because they were really close friends. Um, he said that without a doubt it was like the hardest night he ever had to wrestle because he literally saw them trying to revive his friend good lord as he's like walking out to his entrance music you know what i mean uh -huh. so like that's how insane that was that night um but yeah so he starts off like you were saying like really like he starts off as baby face start really well mm -hmm. um that turns pretty quick yes because people start turning on him which that's I've said this with this research is you don't realize how much the writing of wrestling yeah. changes by the, the attitude of the fans. And I would not have known that. No, honestly. because like, like they actually listen to that freaking barometer, which is hilarious. Well, as soon as that flips and they're just like, Oh, you're starting to get so many boosts. They're just like, all right, go heal. And as soon as he went heal, that's what they said that he really became this, Almost like this anti-hero that was yeah. like so popular because he was almost like so cocky and just being like, I don't give a shit about you fucking rednecks. You know yeah. what I mean? So it was, and it was definitely that, that choice at that time between him and like Stone Cold. Yeah, exactly. And he was getting stunners all up and down. <laughs> well, it's, uh, oh, this part. And I wanted to bring this up because okay. I felt like this was the last time the wwe really dove into the racism yep they did his first thing was called the nation of domination mm -hmm. and it was four black guys and they were very like islamic yeah. black militant was their thing and they said that because he this was when he became the heel but this is when his popularity came back yeah so this is mm -hmm. when they started to like him for being an asshole and then they said when he turned on the nation or whatever and became his own guy that's when like his stardom just like blew up yeah so like he turned on this like little crew that he was with and then his he beat mankind for the wwf championship yeah and then this is like all leading into the 2000s like i was saying where him and stone cold were like the dudes hey, yeah and hating you were either in one can it's like fucking twilight it was. It yeah. was totally Twilight like... Twilight for rednecks. That's they, what that oh, was. Oh, man, they were... I did it, Chris. It was perfect. And you would have these discussions during, you know, uh, the <laughs> when they would flick the lights. God, I, I forgot. But you would have these, like, discussions at recess where he would just be like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so 2000, 2002, he was the champ. He, he beat Shane McMahon, who I always thought was so crazy that he became a wrestler, beat <laughs> Triple H, lost the Kurt Angle, which we talked about, mm -hmm. had a program with Rikishi, who ended up being his cousin. Yep. And I saw this. They were like, there's so many of his little cousins. You're like, he's his cousin, too. Well, th they're all interrelated somehow, Chris. Uh, WrestleMania 17, which some called the best event that any wrestling corporation ever put on. But this is when he was taking time off. So this is what I wanted to get into was he shot this one movie with brendan fraser great movie the mummy yeah um and then they did a spinoff of that scorpion king and he pretty much like became a movie star because he had come back this was like when he was doing this he was wrestling what they had already shot the scorpion king yeah. so like that's when that blew up and like they all kind of like i feel like wrestling kind of realized they were like oh it's more it's like more beneficial for him to be a fucking movie star. Oh, 100%. Than for, because that's when he kind of broke off and started to do so much less wrestling and was just kind of like a name. But you think about it, there'd been no like wrestler before him to like Hulk Hogan bless his heart, he tried, but just he couldn't fucking act. No, he like, was I mean I'll, I, hold on. Suburban Commando. Go All check right. it out. Suburban Commando. I take that back. <laughs> it is such... He has so many horrible movies, but this is what everybody was saying was like, he was the first one that finally became a legitimate movie. Like the one with Johnny Knoxville is like really good. Oh yeah. The um, Walking Tall remake. Oh yes. man. Yeah. They're, it's perfect. So like he has all of these, but then he starts to like come back into wrestling. Like he has this whole thing with John Cena. Oh, yeah. And I saw that the match that they had, he ended up like... <laughs> 
dislocating his knee or some shit. Oh, like shit. it was like a horrible injury that they had to actually like halt the production of this movie. And then that's what they were saying. They're like, oh, that's no. probably the last match you'll ever see him in. Oh, dude. because that's it he's was, losing money that way too. You yes, know? like. One thing I didn't want to add about media, he hosted Saturday Night Live like a bunch of times. There's one skit, which is like my all-time favorite. Fucking Will Ferrell is Neil Diamond, who's completely stoned out of his gourd. Yep. And The Rock plays Bigfoot, and they're singing songs. Like, oh, God, find that. Just find it's, that. It's it, wonderful. So this, this song uh, is about the time I hit a drifter to get an erection. Forever in blue jeans. But he becomes the biggest movie star in the world and that's what yeah do you know what i mean so like there's another point in which he comes back and actually has this epic match with hogan but mm. he's such a humongous like he like you said he did what hogan never could do that it was obvious that like he should win and like he's the dominant star and i'll give this up to uh stone cold steve austin because i was thinking about this i was like he never really tried to make that. He like no. was conscious of like who he was. Yeah, he was just like I'm just this. Di- I'm just this guy. I'm just badass Larry the Cable guy. Yep, like pretty much. Pretty but much. No, no, no. But like as far as The Rock goes, like for what over twenty years he's been in movies, like there, acting in I, movies. You look at the list. It was like GI Joe the remake, all of the Fast and Furiouses, all of those. Sp- been off fast. The, the he had his oh. own HBO show Baller, which was so good about the um, sports agents. He had the Gridiron Gang, which almost yeah. was exactly what he went through. As like he has so many of these great movies. He also has some horrible movies, but that's fine. nobody's immune from no. that. No, and then I mean, but he, Jumanji he, with Kevin Hart, and he'll be in that franchise for as long as it lasts. Yep, like I mean, he's made. Eleventy billion dollars. I don't know if that's real or not, but that he's made lots of money, and he has a daughter who is also a wrestler. Yes, too. I saw that. That mm-hmm. was cool. So because I didn't know four the, generations. So, so many weird things you just don't know until you you research. Yes. All right. But Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.